Might be the coolest day of the year. What a great experience it was. Even though we are 98% here in Louisville, it still got dark. It tricked our lights on at the station and lights turned on across town. Right now, we're back to sunshine temperatures right now, 75 degrees. A few clouds out there. I am tracking uh, little showers out there starting to fire up on the radar. Our total solar eclipse coverage continues. WHS 11 News at 5 starts right now. Well, did you see it? The moon passing over the sun, blocking it out across the U.S. for the great American eclipse. It's the cosmic event that held up to the hype. <laughs> and our top story right here at 5, I'm Shay McAllister. And I'm Connie Leonard. I think it did. And thankfully, the clouds didn't seem to block our view in Kentuckiana. And the crowds came out to see the once-in-a-lifetime sight. I've uh, been following this kind of thing since I was a young kid. So it's kind of nice to be able to see it again and again. And I hope I'm hearing... 20 more years to see the one in 42, 44, whenever it is. <laughs> well, this was the last solar eclipse Kentucky will see in our lifetimes, and Indiana, as he mentioned, won't see another until 2044. Our cameras captured the solar eclipse from the path of totality in French Lake, Indiana. That's what you're seeing right here. As the moon blocked out the sun, you could only see the corona outline around it. Totality lasting just <laughs> over three minutes in the path of totality. What mm -hmm. an incredible sight there, Connie. It was really neat to watch. Well, our crews are bringing you team coverage of this event across Kentuckiana from Seymour, Indiana to the Ohio River Banks of Clarksville and Louisville. But let's start with our crew in French Lick today. It's where we find Doug Prophet and meteorologist Christina San Juan. You guys were right in the heart of it. Yeah, guys, what was it like to experience the total solar Well, hello eclipse? to you. Well, uh, Connie, hello to you, uh, Shay and Connie. I tell you what, we, Christina and I were just pointing at the TV screen when you were showing <laughs> it. Once again, we've been we've been trying to review. Uh, we even love the partial eclipse, Christina, because yeah. it just sort of sort of uh, like a fog rolled in, it, like a slow move to sunset. Yeah, just very eerie, hard to describe. And we had a lot of folks pass by us and say, well, we didn't know what to expect, but it exceeded all expectations. And I think that describes it the best. It was brighter. The eclipse itself was brighter. It was longer than 2017. And here in French Lake, Indiana, it was sunnier than anybody expected and not as crowded you, you, it was almost as if you had your own private yard in many places in French Lake. You really did, and nobody was kind of just on top of each other. It wasn't shoulder to shoulder like a lot of us had to experience uh, back in 2017. I think just all around, the stars aligned perfectly here in French Lake. Let's talk a little about, about the hospitality in French Lake. Take a look at what they did for us right next to our broadcast uh, little center here. WHAS Way. It's been renamed the Main Street off the Main Street. Do you see there's Main Street? Well, WHAS Way runs right off of that. They presented that to us earlier today. The folks in French Lick just couldn't have taken care of us better. They have uh, come over to check on us all day long. In fact, we have the town council president who has to be, uh, who knows, he'll probably get uh, reelected left and right for his uh, right. eclipse no, handling that, here. That was an awesome surprise. And all of the visitors we've met today, everyone's just been so nice and so genuinely happy to be here and experience this amazing phenomenon. So here in French Lick, it happened at 3.04, and it lasted a total of uh, three minutes and five seconds. Went but, through like that. But but weren't you disappointed when it ended? Because you wanted it to stay. <laughs> what do we do now? Because everybody came together. They were up on their feet, and there you see it on the screen. That's the partial eclipse to the total eclipse of the sun. And this is from our camera here right in French Lick, our exclusive eclipse camera. You There's the, the diamond corona. ring. Yeah, the diamond ring, Bailey's beads. Uh, the corona was so bright and just fierce, and we normally can't see the sun's corona because the sun's face kind of outshines it. So this was really cool experience. Just So in the crowd getting reaction as this was happening is WHAS 11's Ian Hardwit. And uh, Ian, I know you uh, you tried to get a look at the eclipse when you were doing it, but you were also seeing people with different emotions. So what did you see? Doug, I saw a lot of people not watching this by themselves, but sharing it with other people. And that's really the beauty of a thing like this, is people coming together and, and doing something that you can't really do at any other period in their life. We talked to a lot of different people here in French Lick today. Here's what they had to say. 
As the sun and moon aligned over French Lick, Indiana, hands joined in applause and in appreciation. They make me wonder how big God is. The once in a lifetime event already checked off the list for Jamaican Hoosier Ricardo Bell. Because 2017, it was not really that cool, but at least I got to see it for once, and I'm really happy. But even the partial eclipse looked delicious. Cookie with a bite out of it, a giant yellow cookie. And for a more experienced observer, it's enough to put the entire world in perspective. Yeah, it makes you feel like a very tiny part of the universe, but yeah, it does also make you feel like part of the universe, because we are part of the universe. So. Uh, and it's just you know, amazing that we can be both part of the universe and thinking about the universe at the same time and observing it and feeling it. Though, if you put it on a t-shirt, it's just as fun. I got mooned in French Lick. <laughs> French Lick's museum counted up the cash as the souvenir sold out, becoming another part of the town's history. Some spectators felt like the heavens moved just for them. Sharing it with my birthday just kind of gives it an extra special kick to it and being with family, so. It always feels special to me as long as I'm with my family, my brother, my best friend, uh, my nana, my great grandmother. And whether turning 17 or 75, such a great afternoon wasn't really about the sky above. I'm glad I'm alive and was able to see it and enjoying it with my wife and my good friends was like a perfect day. Perfection that's tricky to capture on camera. Just to be a part of it and be able to witness something is really, really cool. And, and uh, yeah, it gives you a bit better perspective of, of life and just the meaning of life and what there truly is to live for. Truly, it's about the memories made together. And let me tell you, one of the memories that I had from today is, is when that eclipse came through, when the moon covered up the sun, it was like a nice cloud coming over the sun. It must have dropped at least 10 degrees. I don't know if y'all were feeling that over back at the desk, but I'm curious, Doug, uh, how, how was it over there for you? with Christina is how on time it was. You you you, you wish your airlines could fly as precision on, on the right, eclipse always time. Right, on time while the when, eclipse was. When it said it was going to happen at 304, but it was it was celestial and it was a great rare look at our universe with our naked eyes we got to take those glasses mm -hmm. off for a few seconds. Yeah, and really just that experience you hear the crowd cheering, just the oohs and ahs. Some folks were quiet. I mean it, everybody I think experienced it differently and that's what makes this such kind of an emotional and really really cool once in a lifetime event for us because we were we were not only listening to the birds uh chirping differently but uh we were listening to the crowd applauding and they were on their feet and uh, i was listening to the wasp that was about to sting you but thankfully <laughs> didn't <laughs> that wasp I'm, that would have made it a real, yeah, real well, that, once in a lifetime we didn't see one single we didn't see one single wasp the whole time and it shows we up at during the eclipse. Yeah, that one wasp and then several flies started flying around all of us <laughs> as soon as it got dark. It was very unique. Well, we've got a lot more for you coming up in the next half hour at 5.30. We are going to show you our live coverage once again, the full three minutes and four seconds as we brought it to you live on WHAS 11 this afternoon, so you'll want to stick around for that. And the town council president's going to join me live here on our set in French Lick to talk about how the day went and give us some crowd figures. That's all coming up. So Con Connie Shea will uh, send it back to you there in the studio. All right, Doug, Christina, thank you guys so much. What a great experience you had there today. And we were warned that the traffic leaving the solar eclipse hotspots would be touch and go. And officials asked for eclipse viewers to stay in their spot for a while to help with that traffic. So let's give you a look now. You can see the traffic tracker showing a lot of red heading <laughs> south on I-65 and even coming in um, back west from the Evansville area on 64, those exact spots mm -hmm. where we predicted it could be a little bit troublesome. Meteorologist Alden Germans and the First Alert Storm Team Beast heading back from Seymour right now. Alden, you're in that I-65 traffic. How's it looking? <laughs> uh, well, Shay and Connie, it's uh, 
It's not good, that's for sure. I'll show you a couple of uh, different views here. First, looking out to our front, it's been very, very stop and go. There's also an accident. We're near Scottsburg. We're in between Austin and Scottsburg right now, and there has been an accident near Scottsburg that's held up traffic even more, but it's been very stop and go uh, throughout our entire journey. And now, as you look back behind us, you can see just how far back that traffic goes around the corner there. So it is going to take a while. Our current estimated time of arrival back there at the station is about six o'clock. So this is uh, going to be something that we're stuck in here for a little bit. So we still have probably about another 45 minutes or so before we actually make it back to the city limits of Louisville. However, if you take some of the state roads, you can easily be bypassing a lot of that traffic. We took US 31 for a little bit to get by around some of this and a couple of other uh, side road options are a good way to get around some of this traffic as well. But particularly on I-65 South, it's going to be backed up for a while. All right, sorry about that, Alden. Thanks a lot. We'll check back with you a little bit later. Kentucky men's basketball coach John Calipari now on the verge of flipping the college basketball world upside down. Yeah, the other big story today, multiple sources now reporting he's finalizing a deal to become the next head coach at the University of Arkansas. Sports director Kent Spencer joins us now in the studio to break down the developments, Kent. Yeah, guys, nothing official at this moment, but the deal with Arkansas reportedly for five years, Calipari will make a little more than $8 million a year. However, with him leaving, there's no buyout. Both Calipari and Kentucky get to start fresh. The thought with Calipari after this season, a season where Kentucky failed to make it past the first weekend of the NCAA tournament, once again losing to Oakland in the first round, he would make a few changes on his coaching staff, get more organized. He never made a single change. Two weeks ago, Mitch Barnhart put out a statement saying Calipari would be returning for his 16th year at UK. Obviously, that's not happening now. Now, a few days after that statement, the two did a sit-down interview together, and it was clear Mitch Barnhart was running the show. Our fans know what the standard is. We know what the standard is, and that's part of it. We, the, the mantle we've been entrusted with is critically important to both of us. Now, at least in this interview, Calipari never looked comfortable, which is against anything that ever happened at Kentucky. He ran his own show. You look at Calipari's 15 years at UK, a national championship, four Final Fours, three Elite Eights, very successful, but Kentucky hasn't been out of the first weekend of the NCAA tournament since 2019, and they haven't been to a Final Four since 2015. At Kentucky, that's mm -hmm. just not good enough. Yeah. And, we and, know and the pressure was starting to mount. Fans were upset. Right. Well, those fans, we can only imagine, grappling with a lot of emotions today mm -hmm. as the program's likely moving on without Coach Cal. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing because you see Kentucky fans and you see some don't really know how to feel right now. You know what I mean? Some were saying they wanted him gone, but now that he's the one making the choice, you know, I hear other people saying, I don't know. You know, the thing about it is, most fans <laughs> probably wanted to fire him. <laughs> well, they saved some and money. Then, and then when he's leaving, <laughs> but that saves him $33 million. Yeah. So now you hit the market, you get a chance to go get, you're the kind of coach that you want to get. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Let's go to, now to Lexington. Travis Breeze has been checking in with fans. Travis, you tell us, sad, happy, surprised, what are you hearing? Shay, it was a lot of people struggling to believe that it could have been real. People have such a deep emotional connection to, you know, Coach Cal just being intertwined with UK basketball for the last 15 years. And it really was the top story here today. It was cloudy during the, uh, the closest that we got to full eclipse here. And so most people were mostly just talking about Coach Cal. People are nervous to see what will come next, but they are trying to take today as good news. Me and all my roommates were like, oh my God, no way. My husband woke me up at five o'clock this morning. A shock to people in Lexington and all over the country. Coach John Calipari is likely leaving UK after 15 seasons. But I'm excited about the future, especially once we find, I'm a little worried about who, who's gonna accept the job knowing what our fan base is like. Graduate Shannon Dunn says she tried to stay faithful to Coach Cal, but the loss to 14 seed Oakland really hurt. Over the years, you know, the last four years, we keep getting all these draft picks, number one draft picks, first round draft picks, and then we're not producing anything. She and others stopped by KS Bar to hear the crew on Kentucky Sports Radio's thoughts. And, and listen, 
I don't know. I don't know what Mitch is thinking. Broadcaster Matt Jones confidently saying UK basketball is bigger than any one coach. Chucky's won more titles with more, more coaches than any program in the country. Cal did a great job, but Kentucky basketball is bigger than Calipari. On campus. Some students say Coach Cal should not expect a warm welcome if he comes back to Rupp Arena in red. Everyone's going to be roasting Cal like crazy, hoping that we win and that he regrets his decision. But who will be coaching the home team? Our players are exceptional and that's something that who knows if we're going to have again if Cal leaves. Many fans thankful for Cal's national title and all the swag he brought to the program. At first he brought a lot of excitement. You know, Drake hangs out with the team. I wonder what's going to happen with Drake now. Shannon Dunn, the fan you just heard from right there, and probably a couple other people in Lexington say they are rooting for UConn to lose the national title tonight, hoping that maybe if they lose, head coach Danny Hurley would consider coming to UK. Live in Lexington, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11 on your side.